All right, guys, I want to show you how I made my charts in Excel. So I copied and pasted this one from my dissertation into Excel just so I could try to recreate it and just show you the simple tools that I learned. When I tried to create a chart in Microsoft Word, I could never get the text boxes to line up right. Um, I needed to actually save it as a picture. Um, that way it wouldn't move around. Um, that's just what was easier for me. So my husband taught me how to use Excel and I've never used Excel pretty much to the extent that what my husband um, has taught me. I've just used it for basic functions, um, but it's really nice to have a techie around the house. <laughs> so I want to just show you something really quick that might help you. Okay, so you're going to open up a new Excel document. And if you want to be fancy, you can have different sheets here. This one you could call your conceptual map. You can label them. I actually just had bunches of graphs um, and charts that I made for my dissertation all in just one document. All right, so you're going to come here and you're going to hit insert. And then you're going to go to illustrations and you're going to do shapes. So I'm going to click here. And while I do, you see now it's a plus. So I'm going to try to recreate this one here. And you see, oh, it's big now. I don't want it that big. I want it the size of this box. And then I'm going to swirl it out. And I'm going to get it to the end here. When I click here, I want it to be white. You see this? I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to click inside of it. And then I can just start typing contributions of three theories. So I don't want um, this to be here. I'm going to bring it over just a little bit. You see how you can move it? Then inside here, okay, you see how you can do all of the text effects? But you don't want to definitely, you don't want to do that. You want black, you just want automatic, you don't want anything fancy here. And then you look at your text options. Then you want it to go to the middle. See how you can change it? You don't want any of that fancy stuff, but you could. You can resize shape to fit the text. Now, do you see how I expanded it a little bit? So that shows you you could do your margins. If look at this, like if you want to have different columns, you can do that. So now I'm going to get out of this and now I can move it in some because I kind of want it to look center. Now if you want it to be perfectly lined up with that box then you just move it like that. You see what I did? Um, and you can move it here but then it goes away so you kind of need to have it as long as you can. All right, so there's my first box. Okay, now let's do the next thing for my well-being theory, which was my primary um, theoretical framework. So I'm going to hit insert again. I'm going to hit illustrations. And I'm going to hit shapes. Now look at all the different shapes that you can do. Um, I just went with, you can see I kind of need it to be a little fatter here. Okay, and I want to line this one up and kind of put this here. And now I want to turn it white again. And then that's when you're going to start doing your typing. Now, when you go here, you see how it's going to always um, be on this corner. So let's say I don't want it here again. You can also go here. Okay, you can, you definitely need to come here 
um, in the dissertation, it needs to be Times New Roman. So it's according to which one you think is easier. You see how I just made it bigger there? So you can do it the other way I showed you, or you can just do it look like this, which I think is easier. But I wanted to show you both ways. And so by me making it the correct font, you see how I had to change it again. And I'm going to get it back to the size I want. All right, so now I'm going to just play around with this a second because I like to have it straight on these lines. Okay, so there's that one, and I will just fill this all in. Well, now you're wondering, how do I get the arrows here? So you can decide to use arrows. You can decide to do lines, whichever you want to do. But because mine was kind of like, like directional, I pick the arrow button. And if you have them going back and forth, then you could show that. You see how you can have all these. I wouldn't go with any of these little squiggly shapes. But you can choose the arrow button. Now, when you do, you're going to come to the middle of this one. And you see how long it gets? Well, I don't want it that long. And I want it not necessarily connected to the box, even though you can connect it to the box. I just want a simple arrow. Now look, my arrow is not lined up. So if I do want to hit alignment, I know that there's a way that it can show like 0%. But see, all I had to do, instead of trying to figure out all these buttons up here, just play around. With, look how it's now sitting perfectly on there. And you know how to do your next box. So your next box, you're going to come into insert again, illustrations, you're going to add a shape, and boom, you're going to put a new box here, and then you can make it longer, but I want it to line up, and I can make it wider. It's according to what you need for your box. And I could type in here, go to ABC because you want everything black and white. And now I'm going to talk about my perma model. And I love the perma model. This is what my whole coaching business revolves around. I love the research in this field of positive psychology. Dr. Seligman is actually on my bucket list. Yes, uh, I'm a little nerdy like that. And do you see how easy it is to actually make it look better than what I had it? Like, I actually kind of like it centered like that. Mine, I had it left flush. Um, you might say, well, I don't like it centered. You might like it the way I actually did it. You know what I did? You can just come here and do this. And shorten this box up a little bit if you want. And now you've got that one. And you just keep going and just keep building your boxes. Now, watch this trick. So let's say you have all of your boxes built, right? So come to this line here. Let's say... You're going to go over one more. Now, do you see how I chose one and one? Okay, well, I'll have to do it again, but I wanted to show you. Okay, you can go up one over one. Okay, now when you come here, you're going to do format sales and you're going to go to feel. Well, right now there's no color, but if I hit white, Behind it, it takes away all of those cells, okay? And so now I can right-click it. Oh, no. Now I have to go back to all of these places. I want to copy it. And for, I'm doing my book right now, but let's go here. This is it actually in my dissertation where I took it from to show you. 
So if I hit keep text only, oh, uh, it didn't do anything, right? But let's say if I do picture, it's going to now show the picture. And it looks like it's a part of the text. See? And then I can make it bigger here. I can make it smaller according to what I need as far as my figure on my page. And it's just so much easier to move around. Um, it's not going to shift anywhere. I want to show you the, um, the mistake that I made. You see that green box and you see that blue arrow? Remember, though, when I told you this definitely outline it needs to be black. See how I did that? And so for this box, you're going to right click it and your outline is going to be black. OK, because. I didn't recognize it was green. It was like a dark green. Just weird. But it's like save like that. But now that's how quick it was for me to save it. And let's say you want to move this. Now, here's my suggestion to you. Go ahead and set up your charts the way you actually want them to look before you turn this white. You only turn this white when you are completely done finagling with your chart because look what has gone away my grids and I want these boxes here because that's how it's helping with my alignment so do not do that last step until you are absolutely sure that you've got it lined up the way that you want and then let's say okay I'm like oh no click on this let's see if I can do this um Highlight it again, right click it, go to format cells, and then with fill, do no color, and it'll bring you back. Let's say you want to come in and fix that. Because um, you really need these boxes to help guide you to make sure that you have everything in alignment. Because, and once you get one box done, Look at that. You're done. Now, let's say, oh, you really like the size of that box. Well, you can copy that box and you can come over here and you can paste it and you don't have to play around with building boxes. Let's say you know that all of your boxes are going to be the same size. That's what I did with these two. You can also take and move them out this way. And let's say, oh, I like the smaller one in the middle. This one has a lot more words that I'm going to put like the social capital theory. So if you do that, when you come in here, just delete all this out and you can start and you check your font. Every time I hit that, I'm like moving it, but I don't mean to. So you see it's Times New Roman. You want to make sure that's your Times New Roman 12 um, throughout. And if you want to come here and you want to bold this, then see how that looks even better. So that's a good way to create your charts. And remember how you get your arrows again. All you're doing is playing with illustrations and shapes. And let's say you just want a line. Put a line. But you don't want it there because it's not in alignment with these. So you can even count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you would want it at um, the fourth line, maybe. And then you knew you had it in the middle. And it looks a little weird, crooked looking. And you just play around with it until you get that joker straight. And you're like, nope, that's not straight. <laughs> Here am I trying to teach you a tutorial, um, and it's not straight. So when I'm playing around in Canva and I'm creating lines in another program that I use, it actually shows me 0%. So there's my line, and I'm going to move it over into the middle. Because they don't necessarily have to touch. 
you see mine weren't touching. So which one do you like better? The straight line, which now needs to be termed black, or do you like the arrow? I personally like the arrow for the directional shapes, but it's just according to what your chart, chart's trying to, to show. So as you can see, the PERMA model here, this is my main, it helps to support this and this, which in turn supports these down at the bottom, which is the flourishing. So that's kind of like the way I did that. So I hope this video has been helpful to you guys on how to create these charts. And I could go in and I can say 100% um, that this looks way better than what I was trying to do on my own in Microsoft Word. And you might know the tricks to Microsoft Word, but every time I tried to battle with text boxes and shapes, I just wasn't getting the lineup. And when my husband was like, why aren't you doing that in Excel? And I'm like, you can make charts in Excel. I thought you could just do like, you know, like the sums and like this function up here. You know, I was like, I thought that was the purpose of keeping Excel as charts. He was like, no, it's great for charts. And so I want to thank my husband for um, this little tutorial because he was the one that really showed me how to do this. So good luck with everything. If you'd like for me to make another dissertation video, if you get stuck on an area, you would like to see a way to organize um, the work, um, just drop me a comment below. So you guys have a blessed night.